Welcome back to the Everything Transformers, Everything G.I. Joe podcast, where, of course, we discuss everything Transformers and G.I. Joe related. Now, I have to admit, we've been a little off our schedule lately, but we're hoping to get back to things. So, let's get into which will be like April, May's episode, so late April, early May, and we'll get right into it. we got a bunch of topics to discuss, and, you know, it's some... Some might upset some some people, so stay through the whole episode to make sure you hear all the good stuff. But you know what? Like always, uh, like we started to do uh, in the previous episodes, we've got a little housekeeping to do. Possible, we'll discuss some uh, new additions to the collection um, and some just go over some stuff. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention, though, first before we get into it, is that I actually recently joined the Amazon Influencer Program for both Canada and the United States, so you will start to see probably some links to a storefront where if you are the type of person who does pre-order or often buy things from Amazon, you'll have the chance to buy them from our store. And basically, if you do, we get a very small commission for that. And that goes towards keeping the channel up and running. Anyways, so uh, there'll be links starting to go out with those things in it when we post stories. It's a common thing these days. Anyway, so hopefully somebody out there will pre-order something someday and make us happy. Anyways, let's get into it. First up, let's get to it. So jumping right into it. Um, so some recent additions to the collection. So uh, you know what? Let's start with some retail stuff. So recently came in the mail, actually, uh, G.I. Joe Classified Heavy Metal. I've had that guy pre-ordered since he went live. I don't know why. I actually don't even have a complete A Real American Hero heavy metal but for some reason i just really like that character and i really thought the gi joe team did a great job with that deluxe figure with all the missiles and the accessories so i knew i had to have him so he's arrived he's actually still in the box i haven't had a chance to take him out of the box but he's a welcome addition to the gi joe classified collection here at the swish pop for some other retail therapy I do have both the Transformers Legacy Animated Bumblebee and Optimus Prime came in the mail as well since our last episode, I think. There's some really cool additions. They did a really great job on Prime. And I think if you're into Transformers Animated, you definitely need to pick up Prime. Bumblebee is a little weaker, but Prime, he is very nicely done. Um, I actually also, I also ordered the Toy Hacks window replacement stickers which i haven't applied yet but i think uh they look they'll make the figures look even better than they do coming from the factory anyways so that's a couple things there i'm trying to think what else i picked up from retail uh i think that that's pretty much the highlight from retail i don't actually as a gi joe and a transformer collector i actually don't pick up too much from retail in the past recent years um, it's mostly uh, trades and and uh, Facebook Marketplace editions. But anyways, let's see what else. One thing I do know that I've picked up since the last talked was I do now have a complete Jetfire Generation 1 armor set. I picked it up from a local friend. And you know what? That is a cool thing to have. So my Generation 1 Jetfire is now, I would consider complete. It is not actually complete because i'm actually missing the gun clip that holds the gun to his body i mean obviously you need it if you want to be 100 percent complete but i don't actually have it i'm not probably gonna i don't think i'm gonna track that down like it had to be some random purchase i don't think so i mean i actually might look into buying a 3d printed version of that just to have it it's not a big thing for me all intents and purposes my generation one Jetfire is now complete, and I'm happy with that. So that's really cool. Um, there's been a lot of additions. I actually picked up a Generation One Trypticon. That is pretty cool too. He is, he, uh, he's not complete. And if you have been listening to uh, my channel here, you know I don't really do 100% complete items. They often cost a lot of money. Um, so I'm fine with just a sample of things. So the Generation One Trypticon is not 100% complete, but he has enough parts that he looks cool. The only thing I am going to look for, I do need, I do need to track down the back battery cover for that guy. Um, so I'm actually, it is on my list at TFCon 2024 to try to find that there. Um, and you know, I'll talk more about TFCon later in the episode, you know, so that is a, that is on my list of items to acquire. So if anyone's listening out there 
and you have a Generation 1 Trypticon battery cover that you're interested in donating this channel, you reach out and talk to me. We'll work something out. Anyways, so let's see what else do we have. Uh, something else that I've actually picked up recently was a Generation 1 Transformers uh, Sharkticon. Nah, that was a really nice pickup because I've always wanted that guy, but he's kind of sometimes a bit pricey. So I was able to get one at a really good price on Facebook Marketplace. Actually, I had to drive a little bit to get him, but he was totally worth it. Uh, he's not 100% complete. I'm missing one of his blue arms. But like the Trypticon, I'm hoping to find pieces at TFCon. But one thing, actually two things I did forget for retail therapy, because you, you're always getting deliveries from companies it's when it comes from Hasbro items, because they ship a lot out every year. Um, I did forget to mention that I actually picked up both Airborne and the Techno Viper related to G.I. Joe Classified line. Those guys are really cool. And, you know, I don't often buy like the whole wave or, of figures. So I often just pick the one or two figures I'm really interested in. So I made sure I picked up Airborne. Of course, Airborne will be going in the Dragonfly when it arrives. And the Techno Viper, I mean, that purple just popped. Uh, he was a must get. So that is some, there's two other figures that I did pick up recently that are in the collection. There's some stuff I'm for sure missing here because I pick up a lot of stuff over the the, the weeks uh, in between these podcasts. So I can't really think, you know, I need to start to create a list and I'll work on that for next time. But also one thing I do, I need to take a video and post this summer as I actually have two shelves in front of me, basically above my computer where I'm doing this right now. And basically what I do is I often, it is just a random mishmash of toys that I acquire. And basically, you know, you got like uh, G.I. Joe flight pods here and then they're a real American hero version. But next to it, then I've got the classified version and then I've got a generation one sound wave reissue. And then next to that, I've got a generation, uh, sorry, a G.I. Joe classified scrap iron drone firing the missiles. It's just a random mishmash of stuff on the shelf here. But what it is, is the stuff that's recently come into the collection. And so I just pop it up here so it's right in front of me so I can enjoy it uh, for a few weeks or months, even before it kind of gets filed away in its proper space in the collection. Anyway, so that's kind of cool. Anyways, I, I need a video of that to like to really understand why I'm talking about. So we'll get to that. I'll put that on the to-do list. When we're talking about retail therapy here, one thing that has come up recently that I am thinking about purchasing, and I might actually just purchase after I log off here, but basically I've seen a post about this Fortress Maximus Titan Return head that is available on AliExpress. I watched a video about it earlier today, and you know what? So I watched like the Japanese headmasters back in the day, and... It's a really good show. The voices are a little weird. It's a little different. But like, I mean, if you haven't watched it and you're just stopped at the Generation 1 Headmasters, the American version, the three episodes, you really do need to go watch the Japanese version because it's really cool how the story continues. And one of the main characters is this Fortress Maximus, our fortress. And, and this is the basically the head. And this is a cool, cool pickup. I'm actually going to order it and I'll probably do a review at some point. Or do like maybe a short just showing it off uh, when it comes in from uh, China. Um, anyways, so it's something I'm looking forward to pick up. And I'll leave probably a link for it in the uh, description down below. So in case you want to know what I'm referring to. But it looks really cool and a lot of people are talking about it recently. So I'm going to pick myself one up. Okay, so first major topic of this episode. And we're going to talk about... The recent, I guess, reveal of the Robeson um, Megatron automatic transforming transformer. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about this. And I know this topic has been done over and over and over. But like as a long term transformer collector, I have no interest in this product. I have to say, like, I don't know who is actually buying this product. I, I do think. Okay, let, let's separate things here, okay? So, the actual transforming transformer of Megatron, he looks really good. He looks super cool. Like, I mean, obviously they had to do a tank, and, you know, because they can't do a gun, and what, what is he going to transform into a gun and fall over on the desk? So, I mean, 
he turns into a tank, which, you know, is is like, you know, the default transforming form for Megatron these days. And that's cool. He looks really well. He looks like it's like super like like thick and durable. And he looks super cool. But the fact is, he's $899 USD. That is, and that's the discounted price. That's the price if you pre-order before it gets released, you get that price. If you go to buy it after it's released or after a certain date, it goes up in price. I think it's like 1000 or $1,200 or something like that. I should know the price, but I don't offhand because that's how little I'm not interested in this product. And to be honest... The only people you see with these Robeson products for the most part, now of course there's some people out there that do buy these, but for the most part, is you just see influencers like who like who got this product and you know what? Is it a little bit of jealousy? I'm sure there is a little bit of jealousy in my voice right now that hey, these people get sent these thousand dollar transformers, but like I just I just don't understand who is going out and spending a thousand dollars USD, so like that's like you know I don't know like thirteen hundred dollars Canadian on this Robeson like automatic transforming Megatron. I mean, and I actually the thing is it gets me. It must be a successful line because this is basically the fourth one in the line. They had the original Optimus Prime, then they had the Grimlock, then they had the smaller Optimus Prime, and I mean there's a non-transforming Bumblebee. But I mean, there's, and then there's Megatron. So you've got four automatically transforming transformers, which are really cool, but the price just locks me out of the interest in this product. And I just, I still don't understand who out there is spending that much money on that type of figure. Like you could get a lot of things. Like you could buy like the whole Legacy United probably series and you would have some money left over or you could buy that one figure that you're going to play with like three or four times and it's going to sit there and you're never going to play with it again like it just i don't understand i mean no you're okay it's okay if you're interested in it but i just don't understand the market for it that people out there there's such a market that they have so much disposable income that they can pay Uh, They can spend, sorry, a thousand dollars on one toy. And that just, that blows my mind. Can you tell in my voice that blows my mind that that is the case? Um, What do you guys think? Like, have any one of you guys out there uh, actually ordered a Robeson product and like, you know, dropped a small fortune on it? I mean, I hope you're feeding your families as well. That's all I have to, all I have to say. All I know is you people out there who are buying it, you all must be like brain surgeons and lawyers and have really good jobs because I have a decent job and I can't afford to even come close to buying one of those. Anyways, so leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts on the Robus and Megatron. Do you actually do you actually think it's cool? And, or, you know what, do you want to get one? You know, there's nothing wrong if you want to get one. It's just, it's not for me. And that's all I got to say about that. Anyways, so that's just something I know, like a lot of people like pick at that. And I didn't want to do a full video on that. I'm being very negative out there. I'm not trying to be negative in this, but like, I just didn't want to do a full video. So I just wanted to make sure it was like a segment here in the the podcast as I rant on the stuff here. And, you know, it's just, I got that off my chest. Woo, I feel better already. I got that off my chest. Uh, So, so, you know what, now I can get past it. And you know what, I am sure, I'm sure we will see more Robeson products uh, in the future. Uh, We'll probably maybe see a scaled down Megatron at some point. You know, we're going to see more. I think we'll probably see a Starscream or possibly even a Soundwave at some point um, in the future. But like the, the the line is not going away. I just, for me, I can't even dream of spending that much money on that product. More power to the people out there if they can do it, but it's just not for me. Anyways, let's move on to something a bit more positive. Well, <laughs> I say positive, 
<laughs> but it might be me nitpicking about a few things here in a second. So recently, we have had several Transformer fan streams where the Transformer team comes on. And of course, they go through the reveals of upcoming product. And they recently did a reveal on, I believe it's Wave 3 of the Transformers United chart sorry the transformers legacy united uh, series and you know we got a few new products but how new are they really because it appears that everything old is new again and you know this wave included a selection of characters which were vector prime you had sideburn from robots in the skies cybertron hotshot and then of course the armorizer nucleos or whatever his name was so The thing here, I have to say, Hasbro does a great job. And this whole legacy line, I absolutely love it. You know what? Like for me as a Transformer, sorry, as a Generation 1 collector primarily, I love when they redo like characters and they do them in the modern articulation. And, you know, you get like a modern toy of a very, very classic character. Now, I have a problem. I've run into this era that I was around collecting Transformers when Armada, Cybertron, Energon, Robots in the Skies came to retail. I picked up all those characters and, you know, had a very large Transformer collection and at some point had to thin it out a bunch and had to go through all those Armada, Cybertron, Energon, Robots in the Skies figures and decide, you know, which ones were going to make the cut and which ones were going to be sold off. So, you know, I've already gone through that. I guess my problem here is this is the same sort of problem I had with the trans- the recent Transformer HasLab Omega Prime is that I have Vector Prime, Sideburn, and Cybertron Hotshot in my collection already, in my glass case, just sitting there. So when... The Hasbro team, the Transformer team, announces, hey, here's the next wave of characters, and they're basically one-for-one remakes of these original characters, and they, the, I, don't, I don't feel necessarily the excitement that I should anymore, because like, while I have indeed kept Vector Prime, the original release, and Sideburn, and the original release of uh, Cybertron Hotshot, I do don't feel like I need to spend more money on getting better articulated versions of those characters. So like, you know what, like I have the original and now I understand there probably are a lot of collectors out there that weren't around during their original retail run and they don't have those characters. So for them, that's super cool. And you know what, they're going to see some really awesome figures. But for me, the excitement is kind of dwindling. We're in an era that like, I've already lived through this once and I've already made the cut to which characters I want to keep and which ones I don't want to keep. Like, I'm not going to rebuy some figures just so I can say that I have the modern versions of them because the the, the thing is, is that these aren't Generation 1 figures, these Armada ones and stuff like that. Like, Generation 1, some of those figures were like bricks, like, they're like, hey, I've got two arms and I sway, swing my arms back and forth. And you know what? When you bring those to Legacy, you are totally redoing, reimagining, reimagining. <laughs> you're, you're totally, like, reimagining them, right? And, like, there are big improvements. But Armada and Cybertron and, like, say, Energon and Robots in the Skies, they were, like, when Transformers started to, like, use new tech to, like, do the things that they were doing. So they're actually, they're pretty modern. I mean, of course, they're not as modern as the newest figures, but they are pretty good. So, like, for me, I just don't feel the need to go out and buy or pre-order this wave. And it's just kind of disappointing in a way because I feel like I might be getting, like, out of the legacy I don't know. It's, I don't want, I'm not going to get out of the legacy. There's still a lot of figures I want to pick up, but I'm just not as excited for it at the moment for this wave. So, I mean, like, how do you guys feel about these, this wave? Like, if you don't have these figures, like in their original state, 
they're awesome figures and need to be purchased, right? Sideburn, he's super awesome. Like I have the original three brothers still in my case. That guy is super awesome. And then you have Vector Prime. He is very cool, very solid figure. The original one is super cool. And then you have Hotshot, who um, I'm actually not a fan of the character of Hotshot, but when I was like thinning out my collection, I made sure I kept that character, uh, that particular version, because that particular version is really cool. And now the modern one looks really cool as well because they look like they souped up the articulation on it. So it, it definitely does look like a cool character, but do I need to spend money on it to get that extra articulation? Not right now. I mean, maybe down the line, if somebody's selling it for cheap on like Facebook Marketplace or you find it at like TFCon or like a convention, sure, I might pick it up, but I'm not going to be picking it up at retail for now. And it's it's basically, and not to be negative, it's the same reason why I didn't feel a need to back the Hasbro, sorry, the HasLab Omega Prime, which I did a full video on that. And it's not that it wasn't a good product. It wasn't, you know, well done or well thought out or well, like, you know, um, received. It's just that for me, why would I want to buy a new version of something that I already own? Like I have the original Omega Prime. It's sitting there in my case. So like I have it. Why do I, I don't need a new version that's going to cost me in that case, like $300 American. So like that's an expensive figure and I already have the original and you know, I'm happy with that. So anyways, it's just, it's just a little sticking, sticking point that I thought about. And once again, I just want to get my opinion out, out there about it. I didn't necessarily need a whole video about that. And that's what this podcast is more about. It's more, you know, me taking my ideas uh, of some of the smaller ideas and maybe not turning them into a huge video or big production, but getting the ideas and discussion out there in this format. So, you know, you guys can listen and you can think about it and you're like, you know, maybe disagree with what I'm saying, or maybe you agree with it, but you know what, you know, come back, make sure you go in the comments and let me know how you feel about some of these topics that I'm talking about here. And, you know, do you maybe feel the same or maybe you have a completely different views and maybe you're like, you're crazy, dude. Like you are missing out on some figures and you need these figures. If you think that's the case, tell me in the comments. Uh, let me know how it goes. Anyways, so that's basically, that's one, actually that's two rants down, Robeson and this wave. And so let's, let's move into some happier, happier stuff. Now, this is really heavy loaded transformer podcast right now, but you know, I am going to talk about some GI Joe stuff in a bit if you're here for the GI Joe stuff. So don't worry. I haven't forgot about GI Joe. It is the everything transformer, everything GI Joe podcast. I'll talk about GI Joe in a bit. It's just, I figured these transformer topics are all related. So I figured they'd good to go back to back to back. The next one is for new leaks, which, you know, as much as I just complained that this w current wave is not exciting. However, some of these upcoming releases do have me a bit more excited. So let's look at some pipeline releases that were talked about recently in the last stream. First of all, we have a Generations or maybe through Series 86 Generation Core Steeljaw. I love it. These They need to do more of these tapes. Like, I think we're supposed to get, yeah, we're supposed to get steel jaw. I think that is going to be a must pick up. Now, I don't know about you guys, but Rumble and Frenzy have been impossible for me to find. They did not make that to them to Canada. They did not send them at all to Canada. Hardly at all. Very, very rare. So I have not yet picked up those two guys, but I still want to pick up steel jaw to go with my legacy blaster. Next up, we have Gamer Edition Deluxe Decepticon Trooper. I believe there was some talk that this might be a uh, version from the DV, uh, Devastation game, which uh, is, would be pretty cool. It would just be a generic trooper of a one of the Seeker Jets, I believe. So that could be cool. And then we have Studio Series Bumblebee Movie Skywarp, which uh, I said earlier, I'm not a big fan of the whole movies. Like, I do enjoy the movies to a point, 
but I don't enjoy the toys and the design. So that's not, not a big deal for me. Uh, Studio Series 86 liter Springer. So basically word on the street is that they're basically taking the uh, Voyager version and kind of up tooling it to a liter size. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it works out. Myself, like I already have the previous, like the Voyager one. Um, I picked it up at TFCon a couple years ago. That's good enough for me. I don't need to spend more money on replacing him. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I mean, I think a lot of people are going to be excited for him though. So that's pretty cool. Now the big one, of course, is this Studio 686 Bumblebee. Um, this one, this one's going to be a hot seller. The Studio 86 series is by far one of the best lines they've ha- have out right now. Um, it is just like, it is the best version of every figure pretty much. So to get a, finally get a Studio Series 86 Bumblebee, I'm all in. I want to get him. I got to make sure I pick him up. So I think he's going to be a hard one to get. So whenever he goes up for pre-order, I just might pre-order it and just, you know, hope I get him. And then the last one on the list is the Generation Straxus, which, to be perfectly honest, I've never been really into Straxus. I don't really care about him. So I know, but I know there are a lot of fans out there that I love the hardcore lore and they want a Straxus, a really good Straxus, because I believe this is a leader class Straxus. So, I mean, it's going to be a pretty cool figure. Uh, just once again, not necessarily for me. I'll keep my money and spend it some elsewhere. Um, but then we do get into some leaks. And of course, the big leak right now is the Decepticon Commander 3 pack which includes Voyager, Starscream, Shockwave, and Soundwave. It's kind of like Hasbro's version of the Takara's Nemesis Bridge, but they replaced uh, Megatron with Starscream. So that one will be pretty cool, I think, once more pictures come out to see what that's all about. And then there's there's a generation uh, select, a multi-pack for Revenge of the Fallen, 15th anniversary Autobots. Come on, guys, like... Uh, do people actually do you know, people actually like the Revenge of the Fallen movie? Like seriously, it's it's by far got to be one of the worst Transformer movies. I don't know what you guys think, but that's my personal opinion. So I mean, the fact that we have like this 15th anniversary multi pack, who cares? I mean, I I'm sorry. I'm I'm sure there are people out there that do care, but you can tell in my voice that I am not one of them. So I'm gonna move on. So that is um, that's pretty cool. Now, something I'm going to add here, I actually did a short on this the other day. Go check it out. Um, basically, Walmart Canada had this interesting listing up. It was a Generations Legacy United 4-pack in collector box, which included um, Sideburn, that Armorizer, Nebleon, or whatever his name is, uh, the Hot Shot that I mentioned earlier, and then um, the repack of Strong Arm. It comes in a collector box, and then it, the box turns into a background where you can display them. Um, the Walmart Canada, like, there was no deal for getting this. Like, it was, like, basically, if you bought the four figures separately, it was the same price. Uh, but it's kind of a cool little thing. There's a, a short on the channel if you want to see more details about it. I took a look for it on Walmart.com, the USA site. I couldn't find it. I'm sure it'll show up eventually, but as of right now, it looks like it's a Walmart Canada exclusive uh, until further notice. Anyways, last product stuff, talk about Transformers for now, but the last thing we'll talk about is they just revealed pictures of the next releases in the upcoming Missing Link series, which of course is Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper. Uh, you can find photos. We have posted photos to our community page the other day. It looks pretty cool. I mean, obviously, these are the Generation 1 figures taken and, and infused with better articulation. And I think they're going to be pretty cool because, I mean, like I discussed earlier, most Generation 1 figures are just bricks. And that get these cool original designs, but adding that extra articulation is pretty sweet. So you can find more details about Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper coming out next. If I had to say who will be after that, I'm going to go out and say that Starscream will be the next one. Because when you think about it, if they do Starscream next, they can easily port that over to Thundercracker, Skywarp, Dirge, Ramjet, and Thrust. So that one has a lot of potential in it. So I think I think one of the Seekers is going to be 
next for the uh, Missing Link series because we've got a bunch of Autobots. Time for some Decepticons. So that's my call for that. So that was that'll basically cover all of our leaks, reveals, and pipeline stuff uh, for Transformers. Let's talk about something else. We'll switch gears in the G.I. Joe, and some of the people out listening are like, finally, some G.I. Joe stuff. I know, guys, a lot of Transformer stuff, but let's go into some G.I. Joe stuff. Uh, once again, uh, over on the community page, I posted a what appeared to be what appeared to be a prototype picture of Raptor. Um, of course, you know, we already know that Raptor is on the pipeline list. And I think he's rumored to be a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. But anyways, he'll obviously be a deluxe figure. You can tell by the sculpting in the picture that I posted that he is pretty detailed. Um, This is something I've started to do more and more now with leaks and pictures that come up. I'll post them to the community page. So, you know, you'll always get those coming through your timeline from our channel. So keep an eye out for those things. But Falcon, I have to be honest. I mean, I can... (laughs) Falcon is one of those freaks, um, like Big Boa. I'm not a big fan of those. I'm more, uh, for the G.I. Joe Classified, I'm more the realistic guys, like just like the Cobra Troopers. Um, I, there's a lot more about more characters that I'm interested in coming before Raptors. Anyway, so we'll see how he turns out. I'm sure he's going to find a place in many of homes, especially the fact that that he is rumored to be a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, and people love getting those exclusives. Now, keep in mind, last year at San Diego Comic-Con, there was a huge blunder, and I made a video about it, uh, part of a video, with the Chuckles release. You had to pick up a ticket physically in the area to be able to pre-order Chuckles, and people were paying $75, $100 USD just for the ticket for the ability to pre-order the Chuckles for the full price or whatever he was. And it was a huge blunder because people like were buying things on eBay to get these and they were so excited for him. And then three days later, after Comic-Con was over, he was just up on HasbroPulse.com and anyone was able to pre-order them. And they had tons of them because I don't think Chuckles was going to be in as big demand as they originally thought. Anyways, so you know what? If you are interested in Raptor, make sure you're okay. If you're okay, if you don't get them at Comic-Con, they sell them as an exclusive and it's like kind of a limited thing. I'm sure you will be able to pick them up on HasroPulse.com shortly after Comic-Con is over. And we'll talk more about that in the coming months, uh, in the later editions of the podcast. But that's just my two cents. Anyways, I just wanted to tell you guys that. Okay. So, so besides that, we've got, like, J. Joe hasn't had a fan stream recently. Of course, I did do videos on the release of both the uh, Ferret and the Tiger Paw. Um, the, they sort of stealth dropped the Tiger Paw, and a lot of fans weren't happy with that. It's kind of weird for that one, for that Tiger Paw. I don't think I mentioned this in the video that I released for that, but... Of course, the Tiger Paw is exclusive to Target in the USA. And of course, when they do these releases, they have a a small stock of them available on HasroPulse.com to get people interested. Um, They sold out very quickly because it was a stealth drop. But here in Canada, normally, Toys R Us Canada picks up all the Target exclusives. Um, And they are usually really overpriced and nobody buys them. But I'm not really sure if Toys R Us has given up on the exclusives, but the Tiger Paw is no longer exclusive to Toys R Us and is available at all our fan sites like EB Games, some like smaller retail companies. And so it's very interesting that it is like open to everyone to buy. Like you can get that anywhere. Um, Whereas in the USA, it is still exclusive to Target. So that's a very interesting change. And we'll have to see if more Tiger Force or Python Patrol stuff is like that in the upcoming releases. Um, We'll have to keep an eye on that. I'll make sure I'll keep an eye on that and report back in upcoming episodes of the podcast. So now I just want to talk about something very quickly. We're still on the topic of G.I. Joe. And the one thing that comes up all the time is G.I. Joe has labs. Now, of course, I have the Dragonfly coming my way whenever it's supposed to be released. I guess the fall, the summer, late summer, early fall. I'm super excited for it. 
I did not get the his tank because at the time it was just too much money. This tank looks really cool, um, but I just don't have one. Anyways, um, more they're obviously going to do more G.I. Joe Haslabs, as I do think they are pretty successful. And of course, when I'm talking about G.I. Joe Haslabs, I'm specifically referring to classified Haslabs. So the, they're, this is always up for discussion. You know, what's going to be next? What, what are they going to do? And I actually did a full video on this where they, I pitched five um, has labs they could do for classified. And I think they're based in reality. I have a real problem when other people in the community kind of try to drum up excitement and like pitch these like crazy things. And they don't fully understand that, yeah, sure, these are dream projects that you would like to have done but the idea is that this is a business and they have to be able to make money at these things and that they can't just make you know a 20 foot uss flag for classified series you know what i mean like that's not gonna happen ever and so like there was i watched a video the other day and i won't say who it's from but anyways this one creator had this idea that, you know, he had insider information saying that, you know, the next uh, G.I. Joe Classified HasLab was going to be the Cobra Rattler. And you know what? I, myself, as a long time G.I. Joe, a real American hero fan, I'm a huge fan of the Cobra Rattler. I have my original Cobra Rattler. I have a sealed reissue Cobra Rattler. And I even have a reissue that's open. So I have like three Cobra Rattlers uh, hanging around in my, my collector room here. But I'm sorry, I think there's a very slim chance that we will get a G.I. Joe classified size Cobra Rattler as a potential HasLab project. And the reason why I say that is the Dragonfly is huge. And I feel if they needed to do the classified Rattler in scale with that, it would be so big. And... I just like, where are you supposed to put all these six inch scaled G.I. Joe vehicles? Like, I'm sorry, guys. Once again, are you all lawyers and doctors? Do you all have mansions of a house? Because I don't. So the idea that this is going to be the next HasLab is going to be the Cobra Rattler. I personally think there's a slim chance. And the person who put this out there was like, oh, you know, I've got this on good authority. But you know what? They could pivot at the last moment. That's what I've been told. Yeah, of course they could pivot at the last minute because the chances of this happening are very slim. That's like me saying like, hey guys, you know what? I think the next G.I. Joe Classified HasLab is going to be the killer whale. You know what? It's going to be so big. It's going to be like $600. No, there's no chance of that happening. There's no chance. I'm sorry. You, the biggest thing I think they will ever do for the Classified HasLab, I think the most likely thing, if I had to guess right now, if we're looking at a G.I. Joe vehicle and not a Cobra vehicle, I think the Snowcat is the best likely uh, thing that will be done next. It's a grounded vehicle. I think it has the best chance of being done. We have um, a couple of snow characters, sorry, winter themed characters released. I think that's the best chance. And or, you know, what? even if it's not the Snowcat, maybe even the Tiger Cat to go along with the trans, uh, sorry, Transformers, the Tiger Force uh, line that is out there. So like they could they could link it together. Like the Dragonfly comes with some of the Night Force guys. Maybe they do a Haslab Tiger Cat, and it's got the, some of the Tiger Force guys, and you've already got a Tiger Force line of guys out there that could support it. So I have to be honest. I think it's ridiculous if people think it is the Rattler or like the hydrofoil, or the killer whale. These things are just way too big to to fit in somebody's house and to sell. I don't. I think that's there's zero chance. Now, if you guys think that there is a chance, and you think it's based on reality as a business decision that Hasbro would do this, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below and call me out and say like, no, you're you're dumb. You're crazy. It's going to be. I just, I personally do not believe it. And I would be surprised. You know, of course, 
you know what? If it turns out to be real, sure, more power to them. That is super great. I'm not going to complain. I might pre-order it myself. I just think there's a very slim chance that's going to ever happen. And I don't like people in the community drumming up false hope to get some clicks and some views. So that's just my opinion. Not throwing some shade at anyone in particular, but that is just my opinion. Okay, so next thing up. Next up, still sticking with G.I. Joe. This is something that caught my eye earlier today and Skybound Entertainment. Now, guys, have you checked out the new Cobra Commander and Duke comic books? I I have to be honest, they are really good. So, like, if you haven't checked them out, if you haven't checked them out, I'd highly recommend you check them out. The Cobra Commander one, for sure, is very interesting. I have to say I'm really enjoying it. I am not up to date on the series, but I am a couple into it and really enjoying it. I haven't actually started the Duke one, but I do have them. Um, The Transformer one is really good, and I've done a video on that that nobody watched, but that one's really cool. But the G.I. Joe ones are really good as well. And the thing that caught my eye uh, today was that Skybound has started a Kickstarter, and they're going to do, I don't know, I can't say the word, a a (laughs) copiadium. I can't say the word. They're going to do a collection of the entire Marvel run in one book. Like, that is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Like, that is something that would be pretty awesome. Like, I mean, everyone has their own collection of the the G.I. Joe Marvel comics from back in the day. I mean, mine is not near complete, but I have like, you know, good like, uh, I don't know, 50 or 60, maybe 70 of them, but nowhere near complete. But the idea of getting the whole series in basically one book, and I believe it includes everything. Like it includes like the uh, just the regular run. It showed video. It showed the uh, special missions. It showed the Transformers versus GI Joe issues. So I mean, we're talking the whole Marvel run in one book as a Kickstarter from Skybound. I mean, I think that stands a very good chance of being backed because I think a lot of GI Joe fans would be interested in just having that solid collection in the one, like it's a one-stop shop. And I think, I think that's going to be the backed. And what do you guys think? Are you going to back it? Are you going to check it out? Did you even know about it? Cause I had only came up on my radar recently. Anyways, check that out and make sure, actually make sure you check out that Cobra commander book because it is super awesome. Like they're doing, there's a Destro, there's a Scarlet one coming. I haven't checked those out yet, but basically I'm, I'm, I really like that Cobra Commander one and they're really impressing me. And like I said, the Transformer one is very good too. And the thing you have to remember, these comic books are not for kids. Like they are gritty. They are violent. There is a lot of blood happening in these things. And I think they know what they're pushing the audience. They are trying to aim at, and this is an adult entertainment G.I. Joe Transformers these are books. Also, of course, if you may not be realized, if you're not into these series yet, the Transformers, the G.I. Joe, uh, sorry, the G.I. Joe B. Duke, the Cobra Commander one, they all take place in the same universe. They all link together. Like Cobra Commander is working on Megatron or is it they've got the Megatron stashed away. I'm sorry, spoiler there. But anyways, so check those books out because they need to support comics. Comic books are like a tough thing, right? It's kind of like, almost a dying breed but it keeps on it doesn't die off but like we need to keep these things going so check those out look forward to that kickstarter from skybound and they're doing great work over there so one thing that i've kind of been playing with recently is so like my biggest hobby is that i actually and really enjoy restoring gi joe a real american hero vehicles and so what that entails is a lot of times why well, I always make sure I pick up extra G.I. Joe vehicle pieces when people have them for sale or get them in trades. I put them in a bin and then sometimes I'll come across a shell of a G.I. Joe vehicle that has lost its pieces and I have the pieces to restore it. And then or I'm missing pieces, I'll make sure I'll trade for those pieces. Um, that is one of the things I really like to do. But now. Stay with me here for a second. <clears throat> I do, I have restored a lot of vehicles and I usually post pictures of them. I just restored um, Destro's AGP. Um, I just restored something else too. 
um, what was it? I restored flat cannon. And you know, I like the, I, I really enjoy doing it. However, as we get older, I've noticed something. The prices on stuff, the pieces, the accessories are is constantly going up. And people are selling like what used to be, you know, say like, I'm just going to say like a, a lot of stuff that used to be a hundred dollars. Now it's $200. And the stuff is getting older. I'm, I'm very concerned that soon people like me, we're going to like, everyone's going to kind of age out of GI Joe transformer collecting. Like at some point, like are the younger people behind us actually collecting this stuff? Like, I'm 40, 43. Is there 20 year olds collecting G.I. Joe, real American hero vehicles and looking for parts? I don't know. And I'm not really sure there is. So what I've decided to do is I have a lot of extra stuff. I think I'm going to sort through it, pick out some small pieces that I want to keep just in case. Maybe I just in case I need this part because I'm going to actively try to restore this vehicle or this figure accessory. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rest of it and I'm actually going to try to sell it on one of my Facebook groups that I'm in uh, uh, in, and get some money for it and put it towards some stuff that I need. Because I feel at some point in the next few years, there's not going to be anyone around. There's Oh, actually, let me just let me just state. There's always going to be people around. There's going to be people in their 80s collecting G.I. Joe, Real American Hero. But is there going to be a huge demand for it? I don't know if there is as we continue down the next few years. Everyone's loving Classified. I'm a real big fan of Real American Hero. Love the vintage stuff. But I'm worried that we're going to age out soon. And there's going to be nobody behind us collecting the stuff. Like, I'm never going to sell my collection. I know people that are like, oh, I'm done. I'm going to sell my collection now, but like it's my collection for the most part, it's in a glass case. It's in my house. Like, why am I going to sell it when I'm still enjoying looking at it? I'm doing podcasts here about GI Joe and Transformers. I don't plan to sell it anytime soon. I might stop collecting at some point, not anytime soon, but at some point in like 10 years, I might stop collecting, but I'm not going to sell my stuff. I'm just going to hold on to it and enjoy it or whatever. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to take all the extras that I'm just sitting on. You know, I might do a trade for this or I might complete this figure. Or I might try to restore this vehicle and I'm going to put it up for sale and get some money for it and put that money back into something else I want because I'm just sitting on all this the stock basically and I've decided that I'm just, I do want to get rid of it bef- before it becomes worthless. I don't think it'll ever be worthless do I think it's worth a lot of money right now for what I see people uh, sell on these Facebook groups? I'll see like people sell like like 20 pieces of accessories and they're like, oh, it's $100. Uh, uh, okay, so I have like a huge bin of vehicle parts and, and like baggies of like accessories and uh, accessory parts and like all this stuff and loose figures that I need to get rid of. So I have a bunch of stuff I'm sitting on and I think I'm going to try to sell it. And what do you guys think? Do, like, are people going to age out of this soon? Are we going to be like, you know, these old men just like holding on to GI Joe stuff and nobody's interested anymore? I don't know how that goes, but I'm curious to see what you guys say. So let me know in the comments. So we're almost done this episode of the podcast. You know, I think this has been fairly successful. Once again, I've been out of uh, out of the loop recently with the schedule. And I think we're going to try to do this basically for now. Right now, we're going to do it once a month, probably the last Wednesday or Thursday of every month. And then, you know what? If this became more popular than it is right now, I would potentially consider doing it live if you guys were interested in listening to it live. I would like to do probably more streams. I've got like a bunch of stuff like I've teased before. I've got these boxes that I've got to go through uh, and they have a mishmash of stuff in it. And it'd be interesting to see what I can pull out of it because I haven't opened some of these boxes in 10 years. So basically, uh, I'd be curious to see what's in it. And uh, that might be a live stream. I did a test. You'll find two streams on the channel, the YouTube, where I did like kind of like test to see what streaming was like. You know, it didn't get very many views. It was a test. 
but I thought it went very, it was pretty successful. Um, I think it was okay. I think it was, I kept it sort of interesting the best I could. So I would be up to doing, sorry, more live streams, going through things, boxes and stuff of that, and like revealing things and talking about stuff. And you know what, if this became more of uh, interested people, I would probably be interested in doing a live podcast at some point. I stutter a lot, so I don't know if people would be interesting interested in uh, listening to me. But for now, my big thing on the horizon is I'm getting ready to go to TFCon 2024, which of course is the Canadian Transformer Convention of choice. It's in Mississauga, Ontario, which is just outside of Toronto. I go every year. I think I've gone the last 12 or 13 years. I love it. It is the number one place where I locate and buy my Transformers. So I'm excited for it. It happens in July. I think it's July 13th and 14th. I'll be there. Uh, I'll be pounding the pavement in the dealer room trying to make deals. And then the best part of TFCon is always the Saturday night like people have parts parties in their hotel rooms and basically people post and they're like, hey, come to my room. I've got deals to sell because the dealers, they're there to make money. But the 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 fans, they're there to like trade and like increase their collections and stuff of that. So you can always, always find great deals at the parts parties in people's hotel rooms. And what I do, I cheat the system. I have a mobile parts party. I load up my box and I have a huge container and I bring it around to all of these people's parts parties and I'm getting deals all over the place because normally people are like, oh, you're going to come to my room and you're going to buy stuff from me. And I'm like, well, I got my stuff here. Do you want to trade? And they're like, yeah, certainly I want to trade because you've got kick-ass stuff. Throughout the year, what I do is I make sure I start to collect Transformer stuff specifically to bring back the TFCon so I have stuff to trade with stuff. And specifically this year, I've accumulated a lot of Generation 1 stuff. Now, it's all loose. It's not perfect, but people are always looking for Generation 1 stuff, and I've got a ton of it right now. And you know where I'm getting a ton of that? I'm getting a ton of that from thrift stores. And I've found a ton of Generation 1 Transformers at the thrift stores recently, and it's actually some of the most popular shorts that I post over on the channel where I like show you me finding all this stuff at the thrift store. And l- lately, I've had a lot of luck. I don't know why it is up with that, but I don't, I'm not sure. Like there be like times where like weeks I don't find anything, but the last few weeks, every time I go, I'll find something. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy. Like uh, Generation 1 Dead End just there, or Generation 1 First Aid, Generation 1 uh, Hot Rod. I found Hot Rod yesterday. So you know what? I've got a ton of Generation 1 stuff ready for TFCon for my mobile parts party to come go around and trade. And I can't wait. Last year, I traded some uh, Generations, uh, sorry, Transformer Generation Prime Megatron box, and I got a G.I. Joe Classified Serpentor. That is sweet. So at a Transformer convention, I ended up trading Transformers for a Classified Serpentor. That is so, so amazing. I love it, and I can't wait. I'll be there July 13th, 14th. Um, I'll be there. I can't wait to go. I'm super excited. Can you tell? I'm losing my voice, guys. It's been an hour, basically. And so this is basically, we're going to come to the end of this show, this podcast for this month. And basically, I really appreciate, I hope some some people actually listen to this podcast, this, 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 this entry, because I really like the idea of doing this, because... Sometimes you have ideas or vi- like topics that you want to talk about, and they're not really great for videos. I talk about a lot of stuff that I want to talk about here, where videos you kind of have to like, well, what does the audience want to hear? And obviously, I hope you guys want to hear this stuff as well. But anyways, so this is it. So please, if you can, make sure you follow us on Twitter or Instagram. The Twitter, probably a bit more active on Twitter right now. I do, like I said, try to post leaks and stuff of that to the community YouTube page. So you guys get that. You get everything in the, like your one social media stop with the YouTube videos and the leaks and the the posts at the community page. So make sure you follow us here on the channel. Uh, We're on our way to 3000 
subs, which I know it's not a big channel, but it's really exciting for me. I really love doing this. I'm really excited about Transformers and G.I. Joe. So I really enjoy it. I hope you guys are enjoying the channel as well. And I really appreciate the feedback. So please do leave some feedback below in the comments. And you know what? I think I think we're going to call it there. We're at 56 minutes, basically. Anyways, so we'll call it there. And, you know, hopefully you guys like the stuff. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for listening. Bye, guys.